old PG&E uh, saga oh, yeah, sub um, and trying to explain to people what's going on there, which I'll try to do right now. We'll even do it in a favor report. Um, the stock is down 28 percent. You'll take a look at that. Uh, and you may say, well, why is that happening? Well, it has to do with the decision by the judge the, uh, presiding over the bankruptcy right now to open the door to basically a competition in terms of plans to take the company out of bankruptcy. Uh, originally, uh, the company's plan was the one that was being focused on solely. Uh, but the judge has now uh, allowed the U.S. Bankruptcy Court in San Francisco to uh, a rival plan to allow a rival plan backed by Elliott Management, the large hedge fund, which is in. And is there ever a, something they're not involved with? No. Um, and essentially, to, to put this as simply as possible, one plan would have given the equity holders a lot more uh, at the end of bankruptcy. The other proposed by Elliott, not so much. In fact, very, very little. This all goes back to the judge's desire to return as much money as possible to the claimants here uh, in the case. Uh, and those claimants um, were people who obviously suffered as a result of the various fires that PG&E is blamed for. Not the Tubbs fire, by the way, but some of the other fires that you well know. Um, those claimants have until the 21st to put in their claims. By the way, coming well below what had been anticipated. There had been some thought you might see as much as 100,000 separate claims. It's running closer to around 30. October 21st is the bar on that. Uh, that's the deadline, essentially. Right. But regardless, the judge wants as much money as possible to go to those claimants. Under the Elliott plan that is uh, proposed, you'd have as much as $13.5 billion that would be left for the claimants. The current proposal by the company, which would leave more for the equity holders, is about $8.5 billion or so to the claimants. And so this is going to go on for a while. There's a lot to come between now and then in terms of even assessing the damages from the fires uh, and uh, and figuring that out. But to the extent the judge wants more money for the claimants, well, certainly, even if he does eventually decide that the company's plan is the better one, it would seem this decision to put more pressure on them to return more, therefore take more out of right. the equity. And so that's where we stand right now. And again, David, why would a judge a not do this? Why would a judge say, listen, you who just have completely run this utility well, to the ground, you have every right to make you, your next plan? You know, you do want to make sure that the company is on good financial footing when it emerges from bankruptcy. Right. Uh, so they know, have more. An Elliott plan essentially would 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 uh, would cause a change in control, which brings up a lot of other issues as well, um, uh, and and so forces certain things that are not necessarily in the best. You know, you're talking about the largest utility, which, no, by the way, no, right no, now is cutting power to what 800,000 different that homes. Is, uh, the state LA of California has a crazy piece to about prevent fire. Stores, fl flower shops can't keep their flowers fresh. Yeah. Hospitals going to backup generators. I mean, the public backlash from the, the rolling brownouts, blackouts, yeah. And this all goes back to, of course, this very issue where you have the state's largest utility in bankruptcy, again, trying to figure out what the damages are ultimately going to be, how many claimants are going to be there, and how large the, the pool can be that's available to those claimants. So we'll watch it. But again, resulting in a 30 percent drop in the market value. We've remarked many times on the equity recovery value here expected to be fairly high today, given this judge's decision to give uh, equal footing almost to the Elliott plan. Uh, that is resulting in a significantly uh, lowered expectation for so the recovery value. So Venezuela, Iraq, California, the three states that have power problems, three countries. Argentina, too. Yes. So, However, so California, California joins Argentina. is not from a power uh, production. Well, problem. those other states, it's all political, right? This I mean, is they, not political. They're cutting the power because. OK, so the what? They, they are don't the don't resources of Venezuela. You know, what was the number to, to trim all the trees? A hundred, some crazy number that it would cost Get to actually eliminate there. all the, the, the risk of fire around their trees. Well, did you ever see what the trees look like after they're finished? I mean, it's a trap. But they, California wanted nice looking trees. On our properties, I mean, they come in and it's like they're salami slicers. Or they come with a machete. It's very hard to get to all those trees. And uh, I like it, it a good poses an tree. enormous risk. And the last thing you want is another devastating fire of the no, world. No, I know. Those, but this is just were, this is state is paradise. Fifth, Talk to people in Paradise, California. One fifth of the country is California. And California is on the firing line from the president, firing line in terms of electricity. 
I mean, and yet people don't leave. They stay. The budget's pretty good there. It's, they are running a surplus thanks people, to incredible taxes. People yeah. are happy there. They have there. a surplus. By the way, when, when Mark Benioff's book around. comes out, it's a great Trailblazer, it's an incredible there are people who actually fought the homeless tax. I, I, you know, just rich people who didn't want a homeless ta you know, a tax. They didn't want to put a tax on the homeless. I think the rich wanted a tax on the homeless. Can you imagine that? How much money would that make?